when you lose a loved one, change can be good. If you want to learn why, don't change the channel. Carolina Peoples coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Myrtle Beach Marriott Resort at Grand Dunes. We're focused on a special topic, till death do us part. And we're visiting with Rick Neal, a licensed funeral director and embalmer. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, sir. Thanks so much for coming in early, uh, early in the morning. Of course, it was so thrilling last week. I think I saw you here at the 67th annual meeting for the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce, which yeah. was wonderful. Large crowd, very, Tremendous very Tremendous nice. crowd, of course, yeah. the, the big uh, featured speaker last uh, Thursday morning, Rhonda Rich, the columnist for the Herald who was in town. Wasn't she tremendous? Oh, she's hilarious. Yeah, she yeah. is great. Yeah, she does such a fine job, and she talked about Southern women being witty. Oh, yeah. And outsmarting us men. <laughs> yeah, outsmarting us men. That That's happens right. uh, daily, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid, yes. of course, she's going to be with us later this week. She was great enough to come back mm -hmm. to be with us on Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then even very exciting, Mary Alice Monroe will be with us tomorrow. And Steve Chapman, mm -hmm. the chairman of the board of the Mobile Charity Chamber of Commerce, will be with us on Friday yeah. to wrap up the week. A lot happening in the area. Oh, yes. Yes, sure is. Sure is. A lot happening in the area, and unfortunately, a lot of deaths occurring in the area, Rick. And I think one special thing that a lot of folks think about is, you know, they co they come home after a long day, or a long day has uh, uh, just occurred, and they, they something happens, and unfortunately, they lose a loved one. That experience. What did, what should someone do? I mean, what did they go through if they haven't been in touch with a funeral home beforehand? Well, you know, it, it first it's the shock. I mean, you know, it just it takes your breath away. You just don't know what to do. But the, the first thing is call 911. Call 911? Yeah, call 911. Get the police department there. They'll contact the coroner's office. Mm -hmm. And they'll come and they'll make all the decisions and everything has to be made. The coroner will talk to you about which funeral home. And he'll offer different funeral homes in the area for you to call. Mm -hmm. Or he'll... Uh, you know, and, and he'll find out if, if the person is going to be shipped out of town or something like that. Mm -hmm. But he'll he'll instruct you on what to do and help so you what to do. The coroner always has to come to the scene. Yes, unless it's a hospice death. Mm -hmm. If it's a hospice death where hospice has been there, the coroner doesn't have to be there. You know, a lot of viewers hear the word hospice and may not understand exactly what that means. What exactly is hospice? Well, you take a patient that's that's got a terminal illness, mm -hmm. and in the last days of life, they they get hospice to come in and hospice walk, talks with the family and helps with the family right. because a lot of people likes to have their last days at home right. instead of being in hospital. You know, Carol and, Beaudry was with us just a couple of months ago when we were at Ace Hardware up there on 79th Avenue right. yeah. highlighting some of the very close to here actually from Mercy Hospice mm -hmm. highlighting that process and of course it is covered uh, for up to six months before, if, if the person has been recognized with a terminal illness. Yeah, she's she's with Mercy Hospice, and they do a fine job. They do they absolutely. Do so job. many tremendous hospice in the area, mm -hmm. and obviously tremendous funeral homes. Yeah. And as you you mentioned, the coroner will will talk about a number of funeral homes in the area. Right. And you know the the, the finest thing of it is with the coroner's office is they don't try to rush you and hurry you. And when they do call a funeral home, the funeral home comes. And when the funeral director gets there, they're not in a hurry. You know, they, they try to, to give you your last bit of time that they feel like you need there, you know, with the, the deceased person before they take them away. So now, for you as a licensed funeral director, Rick, you're getting the call from the coroner oftentimes. Do you ever get a call at the same time they're calling 911? They then call the funeral home? Oh, yeah, a lot of times. Right. The family, you know, if, they've, if they know a funeral director, when death happens, they'll just pick up the phone and call the funeral director. And then it's our obligation to get a hold of the coroner and make the decision what has to be done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, to make sure that, that all permits, all, you know, the burial transit permit the, the, that you secure from the coroner's office and, and uh, death certificate and stuff like that, to make sure everything's taken care of. Yes. I see you're listed as a licensed funeral director and embalmer. What's the significance of the licensing? Is, is everyone, I know for viewers who may not have been with us, last month or the month before, you've been kind enough to come back and be with us here on the show, right here at the, the end of each month. 
but some idea, what is the significance of being a licensed funeral director? Well, a licensed funeral director can take care of all the funeral arrangements and everything like that, which they have to do. You cannot take care of funeral arrangements unless you are a licensed funeral director. In the state of South Carolina or North Carolina, for right. our viewers in North Carolina, there's licensing requirements as well. Exactly. Okay. But to embalm a person, to do the embalming process and everything, you have to be a licensed embalmer. Mm -hmm. So there's two separate licenses. Right, right. And I'm licensed in Kentucky, Tennessee, South Carolina, and I'm getting ready to write the board in North Carolina and get my license up That's there. That's tremendous, Rick. Well, you know, we think about it so oftentimes. My folks are, my dad's almost 80, my mother's in her late 60s. I even hate to think about that. I haven't experienced death in 15, almost 20 years. And of course, that was my grandmother. For folks who really experience in death for the first time, who haven't been through that process of working with a funeral home, what are the steps that you go through, obviously, when you get there? Well, when we get there, the first thing we do is go in and, and, and one of us funeral directors, you know, or someone else that's with us, we usually go in. And when, when we get there, you know, we go in and try to to see how the family's doing, you know, see if what we can do to help the family right then. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, we, if whenever the family gets ready and wants us to be ready to remove the deceased from the house, mm -hmm. we go in and move furniture back, mm -hmm. you know, so we can get in and out easily. Right. Take the family usually to another room unless they wish to be in there with us. Mm -hmm. We'll take them to another room. And then we remove the deceased from the home. Mm -hmm. And we set up a time that the family will come back to the funeral home. You know, they may want to come in that afternoon. They may want to come in the next day. Right. And they may want to wait two or three days because they may have children that's out of town mm -hmm. that, that they've got to make arrangements. You know, everyone can't just jump up and leave right then. So mm -hmm. sometimes it could be as much as two to three days before the family gets there to make the funeral arrangements. Mm -hmm. So, And that's a lot of times, you know, that if... If there's a couple that's living down here and their right. children lives away, right. and then the husband or the wife is deceased, right. and they're left there alone. Who's going to stay with them if they're left alone? Well, that's, that's where a funeral director, if they, doesn't, if they don't have friends here and, and haven't made a lot of contacts, if they're new to the community or something, right. Right. that's where the funeral director will step in and he contacts them one of the pastors of the church. Mm -hmm. The churches around here are very, very good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they usually have someone, I know just like the First Baptist Church, sure. they have uh, a people that goes to the hospital because right. the pastor, he can't cover everyone. And you mean the same thing with synagogues or any exactly. place of worship? Exactly. Yes, yes. Exactly. They, they all, you know, um, mm -hmm. they all have people that goes to the hospital and, and helps them or comes to the home and, and helps them and stays with them and works with them, mm -hmm. makes sure they have everything that they need, mm -hmm. uh, helps make sure that they get all the, the necessary paperwork together, you know, because when they come in to make the funeral arrangements, when it comes to the appointment time, and they come in to make the funeral arrangements, you know, they'll need to have, uh, you know, social security number, you know. Uh, That's good. What are some of the things, if a viewer wants to, if they've got a pen or paper out, mm -hmm. want to think about some of the things they're going to need, or should they just wait until that time? Is it good yeah. to be prepared now? It's, it's very good to be, okay. be prepared ahead yeah. of time. Um, That's just like, if it, just to get to this, if a person wants to find out about if they're, the man or woman is a veteran, mm -hmm. you can go in under va.gov. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you go down and you'll see borough benefits. And it will tell you everything that the Veterans Administration will do for you mm. in something like that. Or you can go on their Social Security and see this on the website. On the right. website yeah. And you can see exactly SSA. what they do. Gov, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, the Social Security Administration pays $255 for... Uh, if you have a dependent child or surviving spouse. Is that right? Good. Yeah. Okay. They, they pay that to the surviving spouse. They don't pay that to the funeral director. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you need to have your insurance information. These are all things we'll need to take to the funeral home that That's someone right. will need to bring to That's the right. funeral home. Insurance information. Insurance information. Bring their Social Security number. Bring their uh, their discharge or their DD-214. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, all the family names, anyone that they would like for the funeral director to contact for them, mm -hmm. the minister, the, the people that's going to pr provide the music for a service and right. all that stuff. Mm. So there's just, it, it's, it gets in depth. There's a lot of things to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why pre-planning, because while you have your, 
your mind that's straight, you know, right. you can go in and get all this taken care of. Of course, you talk about pre-planning. What are some of the things that folks often do? I mean, for instance, now, even just let's use me as an example. What are some of the things I could be doing? If, of course, my parents live in the Triangle. But if they lived here, what are some of the things that I could be doing now to pre-plan? You talked about getting some of this paperwork together. What oftentimes do families do? Are there ways to, to begin paying for the expenses now for a loved one uh, a long way out? Yeah, the funeral homes, all the funeral homes here have pre-need programs. Okay. And you when you can go say in. that, you mean exactly. And when, when, you go, when they go in, they... Uh, they pre-plan everything. Mm -hmm. It's called a pre-need. Right. And and they can pay it. They can pay it in payments. Right. They can pay it in one lump sum, and it saves them the money of having to, to uh, for the charges going up at a later right. time. Sure. So it helps out a family an awful lot, especially if it's just a husband and wife that lives here, mm -hmm. or someone like that, or and the children lives away from here. Because if they've pre-planned. And you walk in, and after a day of activities, you find your husband that has passed away in the bedroom, right. and you call the funeral director, and you've already got everything pre-planned. Then you don't have to worry about getting everything together, run to the funeral. You know who to contact, and then you could, you have time to sit there and, and contact your family and let Absolutely. all them know. Golly. Everything's taken care of. The only thing that you can you can get right down to as far as the the only thing that they would have to do is the funeral director will come to your house after everything's taken care of right. and sit down with you and, and bring a small paper with them and just say, all right, what day do you want the funeral services? Mm -hmm. Or what day do you want your funeral service out of town if right. they're going to be shipped back to another place? I've seen some, some great websites of uh, funeral homes, local funeral homes, and otherwise it has a lot of forms you can download. To, much of what you're talking about there at a checklist to help remind you of things you need to be doing. Here you can go right online right. with the local funeral homes. Right. Local funeral homes have uh, a pre-need program right online that, sure. you can, that you can go on their website and see it. Absolutely. That is fantastic. You know, so oftentimes if a loved one moved down here later in life and spent much of their life, let's say, in, in Massapequa, uh, New York, or in uh, the Triangle of North Carolina, they may want to be buried back close to home. What about some of the interface with cemeteries, either locally or out of area? Well, when uh, the cemeteries here, the funeral home will, will help contact the really? cemetery. Good. Yeah. They'll contact the cemetery, and they'll tell, you know, talk to the cemetery about it. And if you don't have lots here, you know, the funeral director. You don't have a lot here, if, right? If you don't have cemetery lots here, or you don't have ma mausoleum space here or something, the funeral home will set an appointment for you to go over, the family will go over, and speak with the people at the cemetery mm -hmm. and get everything set up. Mm -hmm. Get everything taken care of. Right, sure. And if it's a, an out of town cemetery, the funeral director They'll will do help. that as well. Yeah, the Here, funeral the local funeral directors can interface with That's out right. of town cemetery. That's right. And, right. and they can, you know, all over the world. Right. All over the world. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. When I worked with one of the local funeral homes here, you know, we shipped people all over the world, you know, Israel and, and Russia and, and everywhere. Is that right? Yeah. That's very sure. important to know that folks can have that opportunity to be buried anywhere, virtually anywhere. And, of course, That's right. I guess cremation's another popular vehicle mm -hmm. for, yeah. uh, for the afterlife. Yeah, very much. And, and a lot of people's turning towards cremation. Really? You know, and, and, and they like to have, instead of a, a funeral service per se, mm -hmm. they want to have a celebration of life. And, right. you know, they may wait a month to do it till the mm -hmm. children can get together, or they may set the celebration of life in New York, of course, you, like you're speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not have anything at all here. 